Hello, good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you happen to be listening from. This is Brother Ron from Cloud Bible Church, uh, bringing you another message today. Uh, Cloud Bible Church is a church for where there is no church. Uh, If you have a King James Bible-believing church in your area, you really do need the fellowship. You really do need to be gathering together with the the saints. Amen. Uh, Church is just a good place uh, to be. Now, sometimes circumstances arise that it's just not possible to go or it's not healthy to go. Uh, as much as the local church can be a blessing and encouragement, my friend, I know that they can be a cesspool uh, for gossip, bitterness, and just being plain unfriendly. Amen. Uh, it's sad, uh, but it's true none, nonetheless. Uh, so uh, when and where you can, you get yourself into a physical church uh, that uses the King James Bible, has a soul winning program and serves the community. And I will promise you, you will be in a healthy church. Now, if you can't find a church like that, I pray that maybe Cloud Bible Church would be the place for you uh, to learn the scriptures, to, to grow in Christ and to the go and then to go serve uh, some people, amen. Start a house church, go evangelize, or just simply be the prayer warrior that God designed you to be. I mean, we do all things by prayer and supplication, amen. Uh, so uh, we'll get things started here in just a moment. So go and get yourself uh, your Bibles and a fresh cup of coffee. Please say a prayer for this service as we get things started. And uh, we'll start our service in just a few minutes and uh, after a few minutes of worship. I want you to find that hymn book and find hymn number 336. And then when you find it, I want all of you, when I count to three, to tell me the title of it. When I count to three, hymn number 336, what is the title of it? One, two, three. All right, let's sing it. We'll sing all the verses. Do your very best. I heard it all in the old story. Let's sing it, please.
Amen, amen, amen. Just a few technical difficulties there. We had for a moment getting our, our sound up and going. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to look at a message today. We're going to, uh, it's titled, uh, What the Devil Wants from You. What the Devil uh, Wants from You. Amen. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the minute that we get saved, uh, the enemy uh, gets uh, right upset. We jump camp. We're, we're escaped convicts. Uh, he, he wants us back, but he can't have us back. Amen. Because once we're uh, washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no turning back. But the enemy could render us useless. He can, he can affect us in, in many ways, but he cannot uh, take our souls back. Amen. We're, we're bound for glory once we're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, but we have an, an enemy that's extremely angry and uh, he wants to, he wants some things from us. Amen. And we're going to look at that uh, right now. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 10, <clears throat> John chapter 10, if you will. And the Bible says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. And uh, you see, any time uh, someone gets uh, saved or, or makes a big decision for Christ, be sure uh, old Lucy Fur, amen, uh, is going to be sniffing around. Uh, he, he, he's right upset. And uh, if you see a revival at church, he's sending in the anti-revival squad. Uh, they're going to show up and they know how to uh, crash a party uh, right quick. Amen. It's just the way that it is. If you try and get back to God or, or get back in church, old stink breath is going to show up and try and stop you from doing right. He may even be in your snooze button on Sunday morning. Amen. To keep you out of church, but church, we need to focus. Uh, we need to stay on our game because we have an enemy that wants to steal and kill and destroy. Now, again, like we already said, he cannot touch our salvation, but he can bust up a fellowship or split up a church uh, in, a, in a hurry. Amen. And it's our responsibility uh, to keep our knees on our ground, our nose in the book and our eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, because the devil wants something from you. Uh, there are three things that the thief does when he comes around and when the devil's after you, I want you to know that when you see him, he has a threefold game in mind and that's to steal, to kill and to destroy. Uh, the, de the devil succeeded in killing Adam and Eve, and oh, their bodies lived for a while, but part of them died when sin entered into the world. You see, he stole Eve's purity of heart when he beguiled her. Then he killed their glorified bodies, and uh, when sin uh, was conceived, it brought forth death, amen, and then he destroyed the perfect way of living in sweet fellowship with God. Uh, he's destroying uh, living in paradise in the, in the Garden of Eden. And it wasn't supposed to be that way. Lucifer's root of evil caused Cain to steal from God when Cain refused to give the proper offering. And then he killed his brother out of jealousy. And that destroyed the family. You see this pattern over and over again uh, when the devil gets on the move, my friend. That is the devil's way of doing business. He uses the same tactics again and again and again. And we're daft. We keep falling for it. And there isn't a person listening uh, to this message that the devil does not want to destroy. If you've jumped on the bandwagon for God or you're trying to, to, to see what Christianity is all about, uh, guaranteed the old devil's going to be sniffing around and uh, trying to cause you some problems. Amen. He wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. Uh, and he wants to destroy your usefulness for God. But Praise the Lord. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Amen. Keep looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing. And we'll just keep clinging to that anchor of hope. And we could keep uh, committing ourselves uh, unto the Lord and submitting unto God. Amen. And those are the weapons that we have to fight against this evil that wants to uh, seek and to kill and destroy. And when old stink breath comes by to rattle our cage by the authority of Jesus Christ and the strength of the Holy Spirit, we can just tell that old devil to go back to hell. Amen. And it's prepared for him and his angels 
angels anyway. That was never a place for human beings. But oh, dear Christian, only those that have been taking strong meat can do that. Only those that have been in the scriptures and been in prayer and are filled with the Holy Ghost uh, can have the strength and the power and the authority, amen, uh, to tell that devil where to go. Because in our own strength, we have nothing. It is all by the power of God. It is all through the Holy Spirit of God and the pure uh, uh, pureness of the scriptures, amen. Uh, we can only have that kind of boldness if we're filled with the Spirit. We need to be read up, prayed up, and stayed up, and not laid up, amen, because when the devil comes by, now and then he wants something from you, and the question is, is will you be ready? What the devil wants to you uh, from you. Uh, the, the, the first point we're, we're going to look at is he wants to kill. Oops. He wants your confidence to kill it. And we'll find that over in uh, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, if you will. Uh, just uh, open your Bibles over to Luke chapter 22, starting uh, in verse 21. Sorry, 31. And the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, behold. Uh, so, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat so we see that right away satan hath desired to sift you as wheat look at the next verse but i have prayed for thee that they that thy fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren amen uh, the devil doesn't want us to have confidence uh, he doesn't want us to be bold in our testimony and strong in the scriptures or dedicated to church uh, if you get the holy if you if you get holy spirit confidence you're going to be a, a weapon of mass destruction uh, mass destruction uh, for the lord amen and I'll put my glasses on so I can see. But yeah, if you get, if you get the Holy Spirit and confidence, you're going to be a weapon of mass destruction uh, for God. And uh, the devil doesn't want that because what he wants to do is he wants you to start doubting the scriptures. So he can kill your confidence by making you doubt uh, the scriptures. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You ever get thoughts of doubt when you're reading the scriptures? You ever question the authenticity of the portion of scripture that you happen to be in that day? Uh, those little nagging thoughts... Those little nagging thoughts that we get only come from one, one place, and that's the accuser. Can the Bible really be the perfect, infallible, inerrant, preserved Word of God? I'm telling you, yes, it can. The same low-down, dirty, rotten tricks that the devil used on Eve, don't let the devil pull that on you, amen? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Every word of God is pure. It's preserved that the psalmist said from this generation and forever, hundreds of years ago, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. It also says that he magnifies his word above his name, amen. Uh, the purity, the preservation, the power, and the prophecies. How could we ever doubt the scriptures? And when those thoughts come, I'm telling you, they're straight from the devil don't let the whispers of the devil kill your confidence in the scriptures the second thing he wants you to doubt is he wants you to doubt your salvation he wants you to doubt your salvation how can you be saved and and do this or that wicked deed uh the the devil wants to accuse us of all that how could you think this vile thought and still be a christian uh really just believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved that's it uh, hey man yeah it's as easy as that believe and receive we're saved by grace through faith not of works lest any man should boast amen blood atonement plus nothing all my hope is in Jesus, as Brother Crowder sings, amen. Uh, you were, you were God-sought and blood-bought. And if you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, you're saved and nothing, nothing can remove that. Let's look at Romans. Uh, we'll look at a few verses here. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Uh, verse 39. Nor height, nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, 
our Lord. I turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. And it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. We're sealed unto the day of redemption. Once God gets us in his hand, there is no power in, in heaven, earth, or in the universe that can have God open his hand to release us. You know, you can't even remove yourself. Once you're in, you're in. Once you've made that decision, it's done. It's settled forever in heaven. Amen. Now you can backside and you may do wicked things and have some rough days, but thank God if you're a... a, 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 a king's kid amen if you're blood bought and god sought i'm telling you uh nothing can remove you from the love of god amen the other thing the devil wants you to do is he wants you to doubt the scriptures scriptures he wants you to doubt your salvation and he wants you to doubt your service you know that uh, moses elijah jonah john the baptist all doubted their service to the holy one i mean it's nothing new we might not think that, that God could use us, amen, but neither did any of these other men in the scriptures. You don't have to be a pastor or a missionary. You know, just just do something for God, amen. Uh, my pastor once said, you know, doing something like God uh, for God is like uh, working in an apple orchard. If you get the job to work the apple orchard, you're not going to stand uh, at the gate and wonder, you know, which which tree should you start first and have paralysis of analysis. Uh, no, just start picking apples, hey amen. Do do something. Uh, get started. And if something needs to be corrected, the owner of the pasture will come along and guide you in a little bit different way. But trust me, he's going to be much happier that you started to work rather than standing there looking like a lump on the log, hey amen. So just go do something for God. And once you start moving, God will, God will direct your paths. Support your local Bible-believing church. Uh, be a soul winner. Uh, just, just being a good testimony in your community uh, makes you an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just be the best employee that you can be. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a bishop, a deacon, a pastor, or any of those things. Amen. But the devil wants to kill your confidence. That's why so many people don't sing, don't serve, amen. And they don't, they don't preach, they don't witness, they don't support. Uh, he's killed their confidence already before they've even gotten started. I ask you, dear listener, don't let him do that, amen. But the second big thing that the devil wants to do is he wants to steal your crown. He wants your crown to steal it. Turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Amen. If the devil can get you out of God's purpose, you know he will. If he can keep you out of God's place, he will. If he can take you out of God's purpose, he will. And he'll get, you out of, he'll get you out of God's purpose. God has a unique purpose for every one of his children. In person, in purse, or in prayer, he wants to use you in some way. The devil will try and get you out of God's place, amen. If it's church or the mission field or home, uh, by being in God's place, doing God's purpose, there's crowns for us, amen. I'm not saying that you have to be part of a church to, to, to get these things. I know there's problems out there. There's a bad history in the Christian church, amen. But you need to be where God wants you to be, uh, in your neighborhood or on the mission field or in your workplace, uh, just driving a bus, amen. We submit ourselves in the service, and God rewards us for doing what we should have did in the first place. Uh, but the devil hates that. Uh, he'll try and steal your crown, amen, and stealing jealousy and bitterness and envy and deceit. Uh, this causes church splits and busts up homes and causes missionaries to, to leave the field, amen. We don't, uh, don't want to live like that because if he can, he'll try and get you out of God's place. And the other thing the devil will do is try and get you out of God's purity.
pure relationships, amen, uh, good healthy relationships, purity in religion, purity in restoration and forgiveness, all those things that Christians need to have especially pure relationships today. My friend, uh, unless uh, uh, you're with the girl that you're going to marry or you're with the man that you're going to marry, uh, you ought not be laying up. That's fornication. And definitely not for a child of God. Uh, we don't try the shoes on before we wear them uh, in the Christian circles, amen. You need to pray that God brings you the right spouse for you and that you pray that thing through and read the Bible through and study together and read together, supervised, amen, and uh, uh, visit each other's family and then proceed and have that pure relationship. So he wants purity in relationship, purity in religion, purity in restoration, amen. The devil wants to steal your crowns and are we going in these crowns? They're not for us. I think I mentioned that in the last message. Those are for us to lay at the feet of Jesus Christ at the end of days. So if he's stealing from you, he's stealing from Christ. Don't let him do that. <laughs> Amen. And the third major thing that the devil wants to do is he wants your character to destroy it. He wants your character to destroy it. Turn in your Bibles over to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 Scripture says keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life what a powerful scripture amen um, first next thing the devil wants to do is he wants to attack your character by getting you to uh, to make the wrong choices Seriously, though, my friend, if you go to make a spiritual decision, uh, the devil is going to have you a carnal alternative straightway. <laughs> I mean, faster than you can think of the right decision to make, he's going to have a hundred wrong ones for you to make every single time. You choose faith, he's going to present the forbidden fruit. He'll try and, and destroy your character by the choices that you make. He'll tempt you with money to get you out of fellowship. He'll tempt you with, teal, uh, with toys to steal your finances and put you in debt. Uh, he'll tempt you and uh, to make uh, any wrong decision that he can to destroy your character and destroy your testimony. He wants to destroy your character by having you make the wrong choices. The other thing that he's going to do is he's going to try and get you to choose worldly companions. See, the Bible says a threefold cord uh, cannot be broke. And that's why we need the fellowship of the saints. That's why we need a, a brother or sister to come around us. And that's why it's not good to be a lone wolf in the Christian circles. Amen. Uh, because once we're segregated and on our own, it's a whole lot easier for the enemy uh, to take us down. Uh, but if we are going to surround ourselves by people, don't make it worldly people that are going to drag you down and keep you from church. You want to you want to be around people that are encourage you to to read the scriptures, encourage you to go soul winning, encourage you to make sandwiches and hand them out to the to the homeless people and and have uh, uh, hymn sings that we used to call them where you just go to somebody's house, gather around the piano and sing the old hymns of the faith. Amen. Uh, you want to drag somebody down, peer pressure will do it right quick. And that's why we need uh, good positive peer pressure. Uh, men are morphers, amen, around spiritual people, they're spiritual, around carnal people, they're, they're carnal. And that's just the way that we work. That's, that's kind of our, our nature. And that's how the devil works as well. He gets you around some unsaved friends, some unsaved uh, family members, amen, and then he, he starts putting the gears to you through them. They start saying, ah, oh, come on, man, no one from church is here. Ah, oh, come on, it's, it, it's just once. Just try it. You don't want them to think that you're all holier than thou, do you? You're not, you're not better than us, are you? Come on, man. Nobody will know. I mean, I've heard all the excuses. I've been tempted by the devil himself. And my early Christian walk around worldly people, those are the exactly the things it would say. You know, and then in that temptation, sooner or later, you may end up falling. Uh, but you know what? Now, wham, the devil's right there as soon as you slip. I can't believe you did that. You're wicked. How could you be a Christian and do such a thing? You can't be saved. <laughs> you see how that old sucker works? He, uh, he tempts you into the sin, and then when you fall for his bait, he starts accusing you right there. He just slithers right on in and starts to make those accusations. Or sometimes he'll place those worldly companions to destroy your character. 
The other thing that, that the devil wants to do is he wants you to have wicked contemplations. Wicked contemplations. The devil knows that he can't take your soul, but he can try and render you useless for God. Amen. He can't have your heart, but he'll try and get to your head. He'll give you those wicked imaginations, those evil surmisings. It's all in there. I mean, thank God our spirit is saved. Our soul is destined for, for heaven. Uh, but this gray matter, <laughs> it's still as wicked as the day is long. Amen. It's the battleground of the mind. And that's where the devil still has access. Uh, hey, to, to have a thought and banish that thing, it's not wicked. I mean, we're all going to be tempted in some way. And as long as we hold every thought captive under the obedience of Christ, praise God, that's a, that's a, that's a victory. Amen. But it's when we start to dwell on those things and start to act in that wicked behavior. Uh, man, we just got to fend off that attack with the word of God. But to let the devil in and to begin to lust and covet and dream and wander on and think of the old days back in Egypt and to think of the old past lives and the past relationships, my friend, he gets into your contemplations and he can plant a seed that will turn into a weed in no time. And it doesn't take long to just start turning away from God because of evil contemplations. Amen. And if we're weak in other areas, my friends, saved or not, that devil can destroy our character. Abraham lied and gave up his wife. David lusted and took a life. Peter denied and cried by and by, what will you do when the devil comes by? My friend, uh, he will come in one of all three of these ways, to kill, to steal, and destroy. So the devil wants something from you, all right. Oops. The devil wants something from you, all right. He wants to kill your confidence. He wants to steal your crowns, and he wants to destroy your your character and the only way to counter him is to stay close with Christ and what was the last part of our our verse in John chapter 10 let's uh, let's look over there quickly again in John chapter 10 the thief cometh not for but for to steal and to kill and destroy but look what the Lord says I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly praise god we're not stuck in this in this uh, ac uh accusation we're, we're not stuck there amen the lord wants us to have an abundant life a victorious life a spirit-filled life so when the devil does come to steal and to kill and destroy uh we can banish those in the power of christ uh with scriptures amen and the right mindset and the right heart and and all of that amen uh the devil came to bring death and destruction and the Lord wants to give us liberty Jesus Christ came why do you think he died on the cross it was to shed his blood but to ultimately he says checkmate to the old devil it's done amen we can't beat the old devil on our own but Jesus Christ can he says follow me walk with me draw nigh to me Christ said we are in him and he is in us amen that's the abundant life uh, our abundance in the Lord in his church among his people doing his service uh, Christian if you've been out of church uh, for a little while get into fellowship please if there's a good Bible believing church near you get in there get locked in amen and if there's not one because of a variety of reasons come join us online it's not the same as being in person but by the time we get the the discord and the chats and and everything set up and maybe a telegram channel uh, we'll be able to commune and, and fellowship throughout the day man we'll eventually have all that in place and and sign up here so we can notify you when we go live and at any rate the most important thing outside of this website and churches is to renew your relationship with the lord jesus christ and stay strong iron sharpening iron stay focused not looking left nor right but but on the, the glory of god amen dear christian just get back in the game stay focused we are in the end times and i know we've been hearing that for a long time but my friend at no other time on planet earth have things been in place uh, for a one world government uh, government 
for a mark that no one may uh, buy or sell. Uh, the, the, the scripture says that the, uh, that the great men of the earth are the merchants now, and that's what we're seeing in all these super elites and uh, the rest of us losing our jobs. My friend, there are things lining up. This world is in a transition. But dear listener, I would ask you this morning, are you saved? The whole reason why we're starting these channels and doing these videos is so we can get the gospel message out so that you would receive the gospel message. Jesus Christ said that uh, he that seeks me will find me. Amen. He says, raise your face to the air. He says, he that will seek me early shall find me. And I don't like leading people in a prayer because it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the turning of your heart. But I would just ask you, if you don't believe this morning and you're questioning uh, or, you, or you have uh, doubts, my friend, just raise your face to the heavens and ask God to show you the truth. Not intellectually. Don't tell him to levitate a cup or bend a spoon. Our God's not into cheap parlor tricks. But if your heart is open to receive what God has for you, he will reveal himself to you in a very real way. And he'll lead you to all truth and give you a life worth living. And when the time comes, the scripture says that we're going to meet him in the air, amen, that he cometh in the clouds. So I just uh, thank you right now for listening to Cloud Bible Church. And uh, the way the old saying goes is I hope to see you all soon here, there, or in the air. Amen. Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for listening to Cloud Bible Church.